Alright, because I'm such a nice guy, I feel that I should send this off to the DMS to show you guys a little bit about some Flash things that I just learned. So I'm going to use the animation I'm working on to show you. Um, first, I'm going to reveal, uh, here is my background. Uh, nothing too hard about that. Um, I'm going to show you how to change opacity as well as to do a shadow on uh, a symbol. So what I did was, here's my, my front of my background. I mean, that is the back. Here's the front. So obviously there is a... My character will be walking through from between the building and between uh, these two front pieces. The next thing I have is I have um, my character who's going to be walking. So as you'll notice, she will walk, slow down, and then turn. Okay, so as you can see, she doesn't have a shadow yet down here where the brick is. Um, because I only want to do the shadow on the brick. I don't want to do the shadow on the, uh, the glass reflection because it would pass right through. So what I'm going to do is to give her a shadow, I'm going to, I'll just reveal what I have here. You can see the shadow is standing behind her. All I did was take the exact same symbol that I used. Um, she is a, she is a symbol, which you can see uh, over here in my library. Uh, She is made out of several layers. Uh, let's zoom out once more. You can see there she is. And she is a pretty complicated layer, uh, symbol I mean. You can see all the different movements there. We'll go back to the scene. So that's where she is right here. I just flipped her so she's walking the other way. Um, so to give her a proper shadow, all I did was take the exact same symbol, made it black, and then made it opaque. So to do that, you, and it has to be a symbol, it can't be just an image. Um, to do opacity and shadows, you have to have it as a symbol. So now that I've clicked on uh, the symbol on the timeline, down here in my stage, you go down here to where it says color. Um, for just the shadow, um, you can actually easily do a uh, you can do a timeline effect where there is they already have a drop shadow, and you can play with it there. What that does is that, um, like I said, like I showed you, my symbol is a pretty complicated piece, and so I have over I have overlapping of certain layers. Well, that doubles up and then makes your shadow darker in some areas and lighter in other areas. So this is what I've discovered and it makes it a lot easier. Um, so if you just completely pretty much copy uh, my walking layer and then on that certain, on the shadow piece you say advanced over here down here in colors. Uh, make sure your blend is that layer and it will make it one solid layer rather than several overlapping layers and then you go settings. What you do is you turn off all the color, so minus 100, minus 100, minus 100 on the red, blue, green. And that'll get rid of all the colors and make it absolutely black. And then what you do is you take your alpha, your alpha is your opacity, and you drop it down to 23. So now I made, it, I made a shadow, and then I made it uh, transparent. And then you go and you do that for your entire, uh, every single keyframe here. And now you have uh, a shadow that is abs that is matching the walking animation of your main character. Um, you may have noticed that there's this little thing over here that's masking. Um, I only want the, sh the shadow is a full body on the person walking. You can see it. It goes up against the window. I don't want that. So what I did was I created a mask. This big black thing down here. And all I did was simply create a new layer and then draw on top of it. And the mask pretty much says... All I wanted to do is I wanted to show the shadow just in this area that I'm masking here. So what happens is you go over here on mask 
um, you go to properties and you call it a mask so you say okay and then down here where you the, the object that you want masked you go to properties and then you say it's masked so now, now that you have that all you gotta do is lock each one and then you'll notice that the shadow only appears in the masked area so down on the brick so the next the next thing I want to do is since this is glass down here I want to create a a reflection a slight reflection of my main character walking so what I did was first I went back into Photoshop and I kinda dismantled my background image and I took out this bottom brick area and just cut it out and made it a PNG and left this blank up here so what you can see is I just have that and the way I layered it is that that is standing on top of my reflection that's between my reflection, uh, the building front is on top and the building is on bottom and my reflection is sandwiched between it. That way you only see uh, the top half of the reflection or what's in the window. Reflection is the exact same thing I did for, uh, for the shadows. Except for this time I just did it slightly different. Instead of making it black, I just made it opaque. So you click on your symbol again you go down here where it says color, make sure your blend is that layer. If you don't um, use a, a, a layer blend, it'll again double up on your whatever your images are overlapping inside your symbol. So this one's just a lot easier than the shadow. You just, you just tell it alpha and you tell it that I want it at 31% opacity and it will, um, as you can see, it'll just take the image and make it opaque. And then once that's all done, what you have is you have your shadow on the lower half down here, and you have your window reflection up here now. And um, it seems to work out pretty nice. And also uh, a little cheat, because I only offset the, uh, the window reflection a tiny bit, so that way when she turns, I actually didn't have to animate her face. So pretty much, um, mostly what you see is just the exact same image instead of her reflection. And I lucked out with the reflection as she's walking because pretty much her other half of her body should be exactly the same. So I hope this helps, and if you have any questions, just let me know.